Hey everyone, thanks for letting me take some of your time. The big news of the week was for SpaceX's Starship vehicle and Boeing Starliner spacecraft, but there was news about NASA's Artemis programs. It looks like SLS is narrowing down a ship date for the Artemis II core stage. There's other news and notes about Artemis II and III, and Starship is a part of that. So let's take a closer look at what's happening right now. Most of the space world's attention was focused away from Artemis this past week, especially at the end of the work week when we saw the Boeing Starliner crew flight test launch, followed by the fourth Starship flight test, followed shortly thereafter by the Starliner docking to the International Space Station. But the Starship flight test does affect Artemis, even if the implications of the big accomplishments during the test aren't yet as clear. I'll come back to that in a little bit, but first there are a few Artemis news and notes items to go through. NASA Public Affairs at Kennedy Space Center posted a few images of Crawler Transporter 2, which returned to Vehicle Assembly Building High Bay 1 to continue preventative maintenance work. The crawler was recently used to lift the structural base of Mobile Launcher 2 up onto the pedestals at the Launch Complex 39 East Park site, where the new Mobile Launcher will be constructed. Back in the VAB, maintenance on the crawler will continue into the summer to get ready to move Mobile Launcher 1 back from Launch Pad 39B to VAB High Bay 3 to eventually begin stacking the Artemis 2 vehicle for launch. We got another hint about the timing of that in a story by Alex Longo for America Space that was published on June 4th. In the story, he reports that the Mobile Launcher will be rolled back to the Vehicle Assembly Building in mid-summer. That's an update on the late spring forecast that we got early this year from Exploration Ground Systems. And combined with comments from NASA Administrator, former Senator Bill Nelson, that I noted in a video a few weeks ago, it's a little refinement in the forecasted stacking schedule. Nelson noted in his testimony to a Senate Appropriations Subcommittee that stacking would begin in the summer with the SLS solid rocket boosters, and the core stage would be mated to the boosters in the fall. We still don't have anything definite, in part because of uncertainties in the Orion schedule, like the Independent Heat Shield Investigation Review, but if we consider midsummer to be August, that would have the ML back inside the VAB after a year out at Pad 39B for multi-element verification and validation testing. Assuming a tropical storm or hurricane doesn't change those plans, if the ML were to arrive back in VAB High Bay 3 in August, then there would be about a month's worth of preparations between the high bay and the mobile launcher to get them ready to begin stacking with the SLS SRBs. That would put readiness to begin stacking around September or the end of summer. Stacking of the boosters would nominally take about two months and the core stage would need to be on dock at Kennedy Space Center by then to get it ready for mating with the boosters. If booster stacking were to begin somewhere around September, then sometime in November, they would be ready for the core stage to be brought in to be mated, perhaps by Thanksgiving. Hopefully EGS will provide a more concrete schedule after there's more certainty about Orion's forward schedule. Orion is still due to begin vacuum testing next month, so that and the heat shield investigation review will be the watch items for Artemis II. But then late on Friday afternoon, June 7th, NASA SLS posted a media advisory with a mid-July time frame for rollout of the Artemis II core stage from its production plant in New Orleans. The initial advisory included a new image of the stage in the final assembly area at Michoud Assembly Facility, in pretty much the same configuration as the last time we saw it in pictures from last November. Yes, that long ago. It would then be about a week to a week and a half trip from MAF in New Orleans to KSC on the agency's Pegasus Barge, depending on the weather and the progress of the trip. That would be earlier than probably needed, but we've heard about a subsequent shipment of core stage hardware from MAF to KSC, so there's that. And there's the hurricane season previously noted. Core Stage 2 for Artemis 2 will spend its time in the transfer aisle of the Vehicle Assembly Building waiting for mate to the solid rocket boosters. Boeing was constructing new Core Stage assembly and production platforms inside VAB High Bay 2, and there were earlier plans to do a fit check of those with Core Stage 2. But many things have changed in the last 18 months, so that's a purely speculative thought. 
that may not be possible at this point anyway. More likely, it'll follow the same path as the first core stage. EGS and Comet Prime contractor Jacobs will set it up in the low bay part of the transfer aisle to install elements of the flight termination system. After that work is complete, and assuming there is not any traveled work that needs to be done while the stage is horizontal, the stage will then wait there until the EGS integrated operations team is ready to mate it to the fully assembled solid rocket boosters. For Artemis 3, there are a couple of notes before coming back to the Starship flight test. I noted that Mike Serafin, the Artemis 3 mission manager, had made a presentation to the Lunar and Planetary Institute's Lunar Surface Science Workshop on May 23rd. Since then, recordings of those presentations, including Mr. Serafin's, were posted online. And with respect to Artemis 3 preparations, of note was this slide showing some of the, mostly, Orion and SLS hardware production milestones. On that slide, one of the items now checked off is the Orion crew module adapter, so that's noteworthy. Standalone work on the CMA is more or less complete, and it is now waiting for delivery of the European service module for Artemis 3 to the Kennedy Space Center. The most recent public schedule for ESM delivery was July. Once the ESM arrives at KSC and is set up in Lockheed Martin's Orion assembly and test facilities inside the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building, the CMA and the ESM will be mated and integrated to form the Orion service module for Artemis III. Axiom Space and NASA both published something about recent compatibility testing between the Starship Lunar Lander and Axiom Lunar Surface spacesuits. Recent full-scale testing to evaluate the form and fit of the inside of Starship and the suits was conducted on April 30th at the Hawthorne, California facility of SpaceX, and we saw some imagery of that. Doug Wheelock and Peggy Whitson, both veterans of many extravehicular activity spacewalks on the International Space Station, wore mock-ups of the suits inside full-scale mock-ups of a Starship HLS hatch, airlock, airlock deck, and elevator for a series of evaluations about how the astronauts, EVA suits, and lunar lander accommodations work together. Another note is that I'm still waiting for a response from NASA about the status of the SLS contract situation. I asked whether negotiations between NASA and the Deep Space Transport joint venture between Boeing and Northrop Grumman were still underway or whether there had been another change in the acquisition strategy. NASA Public Affairs did note they were working on it, but a response is still forthcoming. And there was another Friday news dump item footnote related to that. On June 7th, NASA announced the selections of rapid mission design studies for alternative Mars sample return missions, and the proposal that Boeing said they were going to submit was not chosen. That concept proposed development of a Boeing Mars sample return spacecraft design using launch of a single cargo version of SLS. Almost regardless, the future of SLS production and operations remains uncertain, along with NASA's strategy for attaining its goals for a regular cadence of Artemis missions given that uncertainty. The Starship flight test was, of course, on Thursday, June 6th, and SpaceX completed a full launch and insertion again on the fourth flight test, and for the first time landed both stages intact and under control. Accomplishing those objectives in a single flight for the first time was a big achievement and a big milestone, and the details of the test and Starship in general continues to be extensively covered on other channels, like NASA Spaceflight. Starship will be the lunar landing spacecraft for Artemis 3 and Artemis 4, and NASA Administrator Nelson referenced this in his congratulatory social media post on the day of the test. What hasn't changed, at least in public, is the uncertainty about the schedule going forward. The test was a big step, but it's hard to put into perspective for Artemis because the updated schedule of tests is private. As noted in a previous video at the end of May, Landing the two stages after launch and insertion was the focus of this test, and demonstration and development of other system capabilities was pushed to later test flights. For now, the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, has licensed SpaceX to continue flying more tests like IFT-4, 
with launches to a suborbital insertion at orbital speeds and iterative tests to demonstrate intact recovery of both stages, eventually with both of them flying back to the launch site and landing. There's the saying, it's just a question of when, and that is the big question for Starship as it relates to Artemis. The big demonstration that the HLS program is looking towards is the propellant transfer demonstration. The critical design review for the HLS version of Starship depends on completion of that demonstration. Currently, the public schedule for the CDR is August of next year, about 14 months from now. Now that an intact landing has been demonstrated for both stages, that's a step towards full recovery and Starship going into orbit for the first time. SpaceX has multiple goals for the system, but for the propellant transfer test, NASA's Moon to Mars programs will be looking to see Starship demonstrate orbital capability, on-orbit endurance, and related objectives ahead of a dual launch test to begin propellant transfer demonstrations. After that and after CDR, then the uncrewed lunar landing demonstration would follow. Right now, it's not clear if the schedule for those demos is up to date. The last information was that the prop transfer demonstrations would be sometime in 2025 and the uncrewed lunar landing demo would be in 2026, perhaps spring of 2026. Currently, NASA is holding all their Moon to Mars contractors to a targeted September 2026 launch date of Orion and SLS. That launch is what formally marks the beginning of Artemis 3, but SpaceX will launch dozens of Starships in the weeks and months prior to that in order to position the Starship lunar lander that will fly two of the Artemis 3 crew to the lunar surface and then return them back to Orion in the near rectilinear halo orbit where the two spacecraft will twice rendezvous. That Starship lunar lander would essentially need to be ready to launch two years from today, if not already in Earth orbit by that time. That's what a simulation I did of a 2026 calendar looks like leading up to a September 2026 Orion launch on SLS. Both Artemis II and the uncrewed HLS lunar landing demonstration test will need to be completed and fully reviewed by this time in 2026, and the Starship tanker launches would need to be underway. That would allow the Starship HLS ship to be reloaded with its cryogenic propellants in order to fly to the moon by August 2026 in order to be ready to dock with Orion by September. That's why there's not much time to celebrate this accomplishment before moving on to the next flight test and the next test objectives. Until unless NASA changes its Artemis plans and or its schedule, there's no time to lose for the Artemis programs that are getting ready for an Artemis 3 mission that is only two years away. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. It looks like there will be some summer milestones in the coming months, but we can see how even big milestones like the Starship test flight leave a lot of mystery about the future.